This is Flare and Flow by The Legend of Chell on AO3. Chapter 7. Glow. Keith curled into Lance's side as they flew across the Earth Kingdom. After sharing in the waterbender's excitement of soaring through the air and meeting Alora and Karan, Keith felt like he was ready to sleep for a week. Unfortunately, he was still pretty keyed up from his daring escape and subsequent rescue, so he settled for leaning against Lance and basking in the other boy's warmth. Hey, Lance said softly. This is yours. Sorry I didn't give it to you earlier, but this is kind of the first minute we've had to breathe. Keith opened his eyes to see Lance holding out his mother's knife. With a gasp, he took the blade and gripped it close to his chest. Not sure how to convey the emotions bubbling inside of him, Keith merely stared at Lance for a moment before pulling him to, pulling him into a grateful hug, burying his face into the waterburner's neck. Neck. Thank you, he whispered. I thought I'd lost it forever. Oh, uh, no problem. <laughs> Lance replied, his voice higher than normal. It was actually how we found you. Could you use metal bending to locate your knife, and then Alora used some kind of spirit power junk to trace your aura or whatever? Lance was kind enough to pretend he didn't see Keith try to subtly wipe his eyes as he pulled away. You should actually talk to Alora more about that later, Lance added. I bet it would be a useful trick to learn, and since you're the Avatar, you should be, you should be super in tune with the spirits, right? Keith blinked up at Lance. I guess... I never really thought about it. Well, I'm sure Laura would, would be willing to teach you spiritual stuff in addition to airbending. Doesn't hurt to ask, right? I suppose not. Keith agreed with uncertainty. Speaking of important discussions, Pidge cut in from the other side of the large saddle, we should really talk about getting you a better disguise. Even going back to sleeping on the hard ground couldn't dampen Lance's good mood. He'd never felt more relieved than when Keith was back safe in his arms. Even now, so soon after getting him back, Lance felt a bit antsy without the Avatar in sight, even though he knew Keith was just in a nearby tent with Laura putting together his new disguise. Lance gave himself a mental shake and refocused on helping Hunk prepare dinner, chopping up vegetables for the stew already bubbling over the campfire. Speaking of Hunk, his best friend had been sending him weird looks for the last ten minutes. So, the earthbender finally said, now that things have settled down a bit, what's going on with you and Keith? Lance narrowly avoided adding one of his fingers as an ingredient. What? Nothing is! I don't know what you're talking about! Lance blustered, cr crossing his arms with a huff and averting his gaze. Come on, man. Hunk rolled his eyes. You think I don't know? I. You think I don't see how you look at him? Even now, you're constantly glancing over, waiting for him to come out. And... Hunk uh, waggled his eyebrows with a smirk. You two were getting awfully cozy when we were flying yesterday. Heat rose up Lance's face, but he couldn't help a soft smile as he remembered how right it felt to hold Keith close. See? That right there. Hunk pointed at Lance's face. That look. Before Keith was kidnapped, Lance confessed, we might have been on a date. I knew it! Hunk crowned. And, and, how'd it go? Also, I'm gonna need those onions in a minute. Lance sighed happily as he resumed chopping. It was amazing, Hunk. I won the super impossible bending game, and we danced in the square, and Keith looks so cute with a ponytail, it should be illegal or something. We had so much fun. I'm happy here for you, buddy. Hunk smiled. Thanks, man. They continued to chat and cook as Pidge and Karan returned with more firewood. They're still in there? Pidge jerked her head at the tent as she dropped her bundle haphazardly on the ground. Hunk nodded. I hope they finished up soon. Dinner's almost ready. As if on cue, Alora burst out of the tent with a wide grin. Keith followed at a much more sedated pace. Ta-da! She clasped her hands in front of her eyes, sparkling. How does he look? I think I outed myself personally. Keith fidgeted under everyone's stares. Well, he definitely looks... different, Hunk hesitantly offered. Yeah, Pidge agreed with a raised eyebrow, but the whole point was to make Keith blend in. White hair isn't exactly subtle. Laura frowned, gripping her own silvery locks self-consciously. We agreed Keith should masquerade as an airbender. White hair is very common among air nomads, I assure you. It was true. After a lengthy discuss discussion about how to best hide Keith's identity, they had concluded that pretending to be an air nomad was the best choice, as it allowed Alora and Karan to teach him the element he knew the least, even when in more public locations. Plus, no one thought twice about an airbender wearing a hooded cloak in the spring heat, since it could regulate the temperature of the air around them. Lance got up and approached Keith, ignoring all the pairs of eyes following him. Keith watched him somewhat warily, but didn't stop but didn't stop Lance when he reached out to touch Keith's now snow white hair, rubbing it between his fingers and thumb. It felt just as silky as before. I like it. 
Lance declared, forcing himself to pull away before he started running his fingers through the ivory strands or something equally embarrassing. What do you think, Keith? What could only be described as a pout crossed the Avatar's face. Spirits, this boy was going to kill him if he didn't stop being so adorable. It reminds me of Lotor. Keith grumbled. Lance blinked. Prince Lotor has white hair? I thought Alora just said it was an air nomad thing. It is. He inherited it from his mother, Keith explained. Queen Inerva is an airbender. Yes, it was quite the scandal when the Fire Lord Zarkon asked her to be his bride, Karen added with his usual chipper enthusiasm. Huh, Lance snorted. I bet Zarkon was relieved when his son turned out to be a firebender. Keith's lips quirked. I never really thought about it, but yeah, you're probably right. Okay, so we've established Keith's hair works, Hunk said, and he's wearing traditional airbender robes, but what about the tattoos? Are you going to give him some fake ones? Laura shook her head. I'm afraid we can't. Only master airbenders are allowed such tattoos, and given them and to give them to someone who hasn't earned them, even fake ones, is forbidden. As the Avatar, Keith can choose whether or not to receive them once he has mastered the element. But until then, she shrugged apologetically. Will it be weird that he doesn't have them? Pidge asked. Not at all, Allura assured them. It's not uncommon for someone Keith's age to not have tattoos yet. It just means he's still in training. Well, that's not wrong, Keith said with a weak smile. Great, Hunk grinned. I guess that means your disguise is officially complete. Actually, Keith rummaged in his new robe's pocket. There's one last thing missing. He pulled up the hairband Lance had returned to him earlier and pulled his hair back, uh, pulled his pale locks into that adorable ponytail. There, he turned to Lance with a satisfied smile. Lance was helpless to do anything but return it. Perfect. Despite having to backtrack a ways to rescue Keith, thanks to their new mode of transportation, the group was still on track to get to Ba Sing Se on schedule. It would still take several more days, however, even on a flying bison, so Keith continued his avatar training, adding airbending to his uh, repertoire. Keith was actually really excited to learn airbending. Like Lance, as a child, Keith had envied the ability to fly and the freedom that came with it. To master airbending, the mo- uh, one must be willing to relinquish their worldly concerns. Alora lectured. She and Keith sat cross-legged on the ground, facing each other, their eyes closed in a meditative focus. Air nomads do this by seeking alignment, which teaches us to detach ourselves from the physical, uh, from the physical and tap into the spiritual. Keith's eyebrows furrowed, though he kept his eyes shut. You say detach yourself from the world, he said, uh, he questioned, but what about the people you care about? I see you and Karan help others all the time. Alora nodded, even though Keith couldn't see it. It's a matter of balance. If we gain alignment, we are still connected to our fellow, uh, to our fellow living beings. Detaching oneself from worldly concerns is not the same as turning a blind eye to those in need. I think I understand, he said hesitantly. You don't let yourself worry about material stuff, like money or property, but that doesn't mean you don't care about people. Precisely, Laura opened her eyes. Shall we begin? Learning airbending, it turned out, was a mixed process. Some aspects came to Keith easily. Air was all about flexibility, and Keith was nothing if not quick on his feet, ready to adapt to any situation at a moment's notice. However, it was also required finding and following the path of at least resistance. Of uh, least resistance. Keith, having always been the type to uh, to finding himself headfirst at his problems, struggled a bit with this concept. He was extremely relieved when Karan lamented that they did not, uh, that they didn't have the spinning gadgets traditionally used for teaching students how to be the leaf, whatever that meant. Meditation helped. Alora and Keith would spend an hour every morning before training to sit and breathe and try to open their minds to alignment. Keith also brought up the subject of spiritual training, and just as Lance predicted, Alora was more than happy to comply. As the avatar, Alora insisted that Keith had just as strong connection, uh, just as strong a connection to the spirit world as she did, if not more so. But thus far, Keith hadn't been able to tap into those powers. Keith kept training in the other elements too, of course. Pidge had finally deemed him ready to start working with metal, which he had uh, he had an infinitely easier time figuring out than water or air. Pidge claimed it was because she was a better teacher than the others, prompting an argument that somehow turned into a sudden battle of the elements. All right, here are the rules, Karen said, handing on, uh, hands on his hips. When I give the signal, you all have 15 minutes to make whatever preparations you might need. Once that time is up, the goal is to capture that flag. 
Cran pointed to the large gully at, uh, where the, uh, at where a bright yellow scrap of cloth was tied to a stick planted in the dirt, and bring it back to camp. You may only use one bending as a we- you may only use bending as a weapon. And Keith, you're only allowed to use fire. On your marks, go. The players all shot off in different directions, not really having much in the way of preparation, since Keith could only make fire without having to rely on the environment. The Avatar made his way down to the gully to find a strategic spot to wait. Setting, uh, settling in the branches of a large tree hidden by its foliage, Keith observed the area with scrutinizing eye. The bottom of the gully was uh, a wide, open patch of dirt surrounded by trees and other shrubbery. A small but steady trickle of water still flowed through the terrain, no doubt something to watch out for when Lance showed up. Snack dab in the middle of the bare, expanse of land was the makeshift flag. A piercing whistle echoed through the air. The fifteen minutes were up. Keith sprang into action, leaping down from his perch and running towards the flag, keeping an eye out for hostiles. Surprisingly, he made it all the way to the center and grabbed the cloth before someone intervened. Oh, no, you don't. Lance skated down the small stream, bending the water to freeze Keith's feet to the ground. Gotcha. He reached out to pluck the flag out of Keith's hand, but was forced to abort the action and twist out of the way of Keith's fireball. While Lance regained his footing, Keith started to melt the block of ice trapping his feet. Before he could finish, Lance tackled Keith onto his back. How did this keep happening? We really need to stop meeting like this, Lance winked as he tauntingly waved the flag. Before Keith could make a snarky retort, an orange and white blur zoomed past them, snatching the flag out of Lance's grasp with a cackle. Alora, Lance leapt up to chase the aeronomad, bending a trail of ice in front of himself to catch up with her air scooter. Keith scrambled to melt the remaining ice around his feet and used the blast of fire to propel himself as he joined them. Alora was riding the ball of air backward, sticking her tongue out at the two boys when Lance shouted, Alora, watch out! Blinking, she turned around just in time to see a thick wall of earth rising up, uh, rise up directly in her path. Alora used a gust of wind to slow herself in time to avoid crashing into the obstacle, only for three more walls to shoot up around her, boxing her in. Stone bars grew across the top. I'll take that. Hunk reached down through the bars and stole the flag from the, pr- uh, from the pouting airbender. His smile dropped when he turned to find Lance almost upon him, with Keith not far behind. Uh-oh. Hunk hastily threw up another wall to block the strong blast of water. Keith and Lance came to a halt in front of Hunk, exchanging glances in silent agreement. The two charged at the earthbender in unison. Oh, so we're making alliances now, huh? Hunk demanded as he fended off their combined attacks. Well, in that case, Pidge now! Keith and Lance ceased their actions, tensing in anticipation, only for Hunk to turn around and start running away. Just kidding! He called over his shoulder. Hunk! Lance screeched in outrage as he gave chase once more. Keith was hot on his heels as Alora who had finally escaped as was Alora who finally escaped her prison. Hunk was undeniably the slowest of the group and had to make it up for it by bending obstacles behind him, which forced the others to dodge and leap over both walls and pits. Even so, they were steadily gaining on him. Hunk nearly made it back to camp when a thin metal pole tripped him, causing the earthbender to fall flat on his face. Pitch sm- uh, smugly picked up the flag from where he dropped it un- uh, dropped it as the other three skidded to a halt beside him. I was wondering when you'd show up, said Lance as uh, Hunk picked himself back up. Pidge grinned. I figured I'd let you guys tire each other out a bit before joining the fray. The five benders found themselves in a standoff, eyeing each other warily. Keith wasn't sure who made the first move, but within mo- moments they were all tangled up in one big scuffle, elements seemingly forgotten in favor of the old-fashioned roughhousing. Ow, that was my nose! Lance, stop pulling my hair! I'm not! That was Hunk! No, it wasn't! Wait, who has the flag? Meow. The other group went. Uh, the group went silent. <laughs> when the group went still and looked down, a tiger bear cub uh, blinked up at them, the flag in its mouth. After a moment of silence, the cub simply turned and trotted away with his prize. Keith, Lance, Alora, Hunk, and Pidge stared at it, at its retreating figure. In unison, they met each other's eyes and burst into laughter. Keith, may I speak to you for a moment? Keith set aside the. Uh, a uh, whitstone he'd been using to sharpen his knife and gestured for Laura to take a seat. The airbender gracefully perched next to him on the, on the larger log. Now that you've mastered the basics of the four elements, I believe it's time to start thinking about your responsibilities as the Avatar. What, which responsibilities are we talking about, exactly? Keith asked warily. 
Alora squared her shoulders and sat up taller, eyes bright with purpose. What do you know about the elemental guardians? Keith racked his brain. They're four spirits who protect each nation. They take the forms of lions, I think. That's correct, Alora nodded. The lions have watched over the world for as long as the four nations have existed. Alora's eyes darkened. Ten years ago, the white lion of the air di- of air disappeared. My fellow air nomads and I have been searching for her ever since, but have no but have had no ex- success. I was hoping you might be willing to aid us. As the Avatar, you possess a connection to the spirits that the rest of us lack. I don't know, Keith replied dubiously. So far, I haven't been able to access the spirit world at all, even with your training. Don't worry, you've been making excellent progress. I'm sure you'll figure it out soon, she said, smiled gently. So, can we count on your help? Finding the white lion is one of the up- uh, is of the utmost importance. The world needs all four to keep balance. Without them, things have already started to fall into chaos. Do what I can, Keith promised, after I find Shiro. Alora's relieved smile slipped away. Oh, I was actually hoping we could go to the Northern Air Temple tomorrow, she said. That way you can meet some of our leaders and learn all you need to know about the lions. The Northern Air Temple? Keith repeated in shock. I thought we were heading to Bossing Say. We are, Alora assured him, but the temple is close by, so I thought we could make a quick detour. This is very important. So is finding my brother, Keith growled with narrowed eyes. Alora pursed her lips. It won't take long, I promise. Besides, I already contacted the monks and told them we were on our way. Keith leapt to his feet in outrage. You what? Without even asking me first? What if I didn't agree to this detour? I'm asking you now. Alora argued. She stood as well and placed her hands on her hips. And I'm sorry, but I don't think you're you'd be a I didn't think you'd be opposed. It's your duty. I don't care about my duty. I care about Shiro. I'm sure he's perfectly all right, and this really cannot wait any longer. You don't know that. He could be in danger. Even if he is, you have an obligation as the Avatar. You cannot place this one's men life above the rest of the world. Watch me. He snarled as he spun on his heel and stormed away. Hey, man. Lance plopped down next to the Keith, dangling his long legs over the edge of a large outcropping of rock. Keith didn't acknowledge him, curled up with his arms around his knees, and stared out at the horizon. The two watched, this, uh, the two watched in silence as the sun turned the azure sky uh, a dusky pink. It would have been romantic under different circumstances. As it was, Lance forced himself to speak. Listen, I know it's my duty as the Avatar to help people and put the world above my own needs. Keith interrupted with a scowl, and I'm okay with that, really. But I can't abandon Shiro. He's my brother, and he's done so much to help me. Keith sighed, hunching his shoulders to make himself even smaller. (sighs) Things would be so much easier if Laura was the Avatar. She's already so full of purpose and belief in her destiny. Laura would make a pretty good Avatar, Lance agreed, but don't sell yourself short. You're the most talented bender I know, and you may try to hide it, but I've seen how much you care about other people. You're an amazing avatar, Keith. Lance slung an arm around Keith, tugging him gently until the other boy gave in and shuffled, gave in and shuffled closer. And I get it about your brother, Lance added. Alora will too. She just needs some time. She's been trying to save the world for nearly a decade, and now that you're here, that goal is finally within reach. You can't blame her for getting a little ahead of herself. He shot the firebender a look. You two are more similar than you think. Keith glanced up at him, his dark eyelashes looking even longer in contrast to the white hair framing his face. We are? Yeah. Lance finally succumbed to the desire that had been teasing him for days and ran his fingers through Keith's hair, marveling at how soft it was. You're both total badasses who think you know what's best and are too stubborn for your own good. Keith melted closer with a sigh, practically purring under Lance's touch. You sure you're not just talking about yourself? Lance let out a tuck. Lance let out a chuckle. Trust me, I've got nothing on you guys. When Keith and Lance finally returned to the camp, long after the sun had gone down, Alora came over to meet them, looking uh, contrite. Keith, she agreed, I want to apologize. Sometime, I sometimes get so focused on the mission that I forget there are other equally important factors to take it into account. I'm sorry. Remembering Lance's words, Keith offered her a sheepish smile. I guess we have it in common. Look. Keith met her gaze with serious eyes. I want to help you. I do. And I promise I'll do everything in my power to find the white lion. But I have to make sure my brother is safe first. I suppose that's fair, Alora conceded. Where is he? 
The plan was to meet in Bossing Say. Sure has a friend at the university, Samuel Holt. He agreed to provide refuge and help us forge new identities. Wait, Pidge interjected from her seat by the fire. That can't be right. Keith turned to her with a frown. What do you mean? Samuel Holt is my father. Lance blinked, his face scrunching up in confusion. I thought you said your dad's been missing for a year. He has. What? Then who wrote those letters to Shiro? Keith suddenly turned pale. That must be how Lotor found us the night we escaped. Which means he knows you're going to Bossing Say and probably has some kind of trap waiting for you, Pidge added grimly. Well, this is a good thing, right? Hunk asked. Now you know. Yes, Keith's eyes darkened, but Shiro doesn't. If there's a if there is a trap, he'll be walking right into it.